Amen. Won't hold you long, but I want to bring you the word that God's laid on our heart. Amen. We started preaching this morning, and we used in the book of Numbers, chapter 13 and 14, of how that Bible readers know that the children of Israel have left Egypt, and they are now on their way to the promised land. It is supposed to be just a short journey, less than two weeks we know of, and they have turned it into a 40-year experience. Amen. And there's a lot of folks that or uh, spend a lot of time in church, but they don't never get very far. Right. Amen. Amen. A lot of folks are not no, they are no more spiritual today than they were the day they were saved. Right. They have not grown any in the Spirit of God. Now, we're not supposed to stay children, but we are supposed to grow in the admiration and the grace of God. We're supposed to become mature Christians. Amen. Amen. And mature Christians are to understand what goes on around them and understand what's happening. Amen. Listen to me. When I was a child, Paul said, when I was a child, I acted as a child. I spoke as a child. I thought as a child. He said, but when I become an adult, I've done away with childish things. This morning we focused on one word, being stuck in the wilderness. And we focused on the danger of being stuck in the wilderness. When you get stuck, you're not going to receive the blessings of God. That's right. Amen. God still looks after you, but you don't receive the full benefits of knowing who God is. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. And we find ourselves tonight, we want to go back, and I, I was leaving church, and Miss Sherry asked me, she said, how many more points do you have with that sermon? And it just seemed like all day long, God just said, I want you to finish it tonight. Amen. Now, I, I, I've never been one that usually goes back and tries to pick up this. I'm not real good at it. Amen. But I want to try tonight to find ourselves over in the wilderness. These folks have... They, have, they are stuck there. God has pronounced sentence on them. They, he have, they have been told, they have been told that, listen to me, you are going to wonder here, everybody 20 years and above is going to die in the wilderness. The only ones that's going to get to see the promised land, Brother Jimmy, are the ones that are 19 and below, excluding the families of Joshua and Caleb. They're going to get to go. Why? Why did they get to go and everybody else didn't? Because they didn't get stuck in the wilderness. Amen. Amen. They didn't get stuck in the wilderness. They were ready to go. All right, let's go into it real quickly. Let's say a prayer and we'll get right into the message and I'll try to do what God tells me to. God, as we come to you just one more time, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for looking after us, taking care of us, helping us, God, in our time of need, giving us what we need when we need it. God, we know that you're a God that's a capable God, a loving God, and a willing God. God, we thank you for being on our side. Be with our little church tonight. Be with each and every member. I pray that you wrap us up in your spirit. I pray that you run the devil off. I pray that you help us to get over into your hands and find the message, God, that you've got prepared for us tonight. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This morning I read to you in Galatians chapter 5, starting with verse number 7. It said, you did, did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Listen to verse number 8. This persuasion cometh not of him that called with you. You know what Paul is telling uh, the, the Galatians? God has done nothing for you to cause you to stop on him. God has done, God has not let you down in any way. God has not failed you. God has not deceived you. God has not lied to you. God's been there every time that he said he would. God's been there every time that he was needed. Amen. Uh, sure, he might not have showed up on your doorstep when you thought he ought to. Oh, but he still came at the right time. Somebody say, amen, amen. I, I thought this evening as I began to think, amen, as Paul told the Galatians, he said, it ain't God that's caused you because God has been there every time that you needed him, Granny. Every time that you had a need, every time that you had a, a heartache, God has been right there with you, amen. And Paul is saying, you can, I put this in layman's terms, 
Paul was just pulling over to the side of the road and he said, you can't blame your situation on God. Amen. God said, you can't blame God for the way you feel. You can't blame God for the way you act because God has been God. Amen. And we talked this morning about how what has hindered them and what has stopped them in the wilderness. What has caused them to quit believing, Brother Chad, because we have found nothing that has come against them that God has not delivered. I know this is a Sunday night crowd and I know it's been a long Sunday. Amen. Oh, but can we say amen that our God has delivered every time? Amen. I mean, we have a delivering God. We have a God that delivers. Amen. Ain't that good? Amen. And listen to me tonight. Uh, listen to me. They have stopped. They have stopped in the wilderness. They're stuck. That means they can't go back and they ain't going forward. And they're stuck there. I want to give you a few reasons. Amen. And then I want to try to do something to help loose you tonight. To get you unstuck. Amen. There's a remedy for it. There's a remedy for it. I found it today. Oh, listen to me. Amen. I'll get to it. Amen. Listen to me. And I want to show you something. The children of Israel are stopped because they have quit believing in an almighty God. Amen. I did a funeral yesterday, and the first thing I was told about the family was that none of them believed in God. And I told them, I said, I want to talk to you today because whether you believe the sun's coming up in the morning or not, it's not going to, your belief is not going to stop the sun from shining. Right. Amen. Amen. And can I help you this morning? Your belief in God is not going to stop God from being God. Amen. 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 Somebody said, I, I'll get in the way. No, you can't get in the way of God. Ain't nobody ever get in the way of God. God is able to move any obstacle out of His way. Amen. Amen. But the children of Israel have, are there and they have stopped believing. And let me tell you what they stopped believing. They have stopped believing that God knows where He's going. They stop believing that God knows what He's doing. They stop believing that God is capable of taking care of them. Amen. Sounds a lot like our churches today. Amen. We, we come to the point where we don't believe that God knows what He's doing anymore. Amen. There are so many folks that are searching for a new way. There are so many folks that are searching for something. Amen. You know what? Our churches today are looking for things to, uh, to help folks. Amen. And all we're doing is giving them a pacifier that takes care of them for a few days and then they're right back in the same shape that they're in. I'm being honest with you. Listen to me. Why look for a new way when there ain't nothing wrong with the way? Some of y'all ain't catching on. Some of y'all, we're going to get through this, y'all. Amen. It's okay. I'm happy. Amen. It's been a great day. Amen. And, and let me say this. I need your prayer. I'm about 25 pounds overweight. And, I, and for the last few days, I've been feeling lightheaded. And I, I've been having a hard time. And, I, and the devil tells me all the time that he's coming after me. Amen. And you know what? He's trying to make me get stuck. Amen. Because my God, I, I, ain't nothing wrong with me. I just need to quit eating like a hawk. I'm not going to blame my problems on you. I'm not going to go get mad. I'm not going to get Betty, mad at Betty Crocker. She can make every cake she wants. Amen. But until I get a little, uh, little oh, listen to me, somebody. Amen. Yes. Until I get a little want to in my life, ain't nobody going to do me no good. Don't nobody make me eat ten biscuits at one time. They sure do. That's, yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem. A little gravy. The Bible said there was pleasure in sin for a seed. And I want you to pray. I, I'm really going to try tomorrow to do the right thing. And I'm starting tomorrow. And the Bible says if I need help, to ask the ones that love me to help me pray for me. Amen. Right. Amen. Hey, I, I'm being honest. Amen. I, I, I want to feel better. I want to be able to preach. I want to be able, amen, to do the things. And somebody said, well, preacher, what's wrong? Sometimes my pride gets me stuck. Yes, sir. Sometimes me standing in front of you to make you think I'm impenetrable, that I can't be penetrated by the fiery darts of the devil. Sometimes 
of me standing here in front of you trying to make you think that what the devil does to me does not hurt me is just absolutely insane because it don't matter who you are when the devil jumps on you it bothers you amen so what I got to do tonight is get past my pride and ask the people that love me to help me to do the right thing Amen. I need it. Amen. Hey, listen to me. And you know you can preach to me and talk to me. And I, I got a little brother that sits over there. He can tell me all the right things. But until I get it in my mind what I need to do, I can't. Why would you say that, preacher? But to let you know we've all got issues. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hey, some of y'all sitting there tonight with more issues than you get in your pocket. Amen. But your pride keeps you from coming to the altar and receiving the help that you need to get over it. That's right. Amen. amen. Say amen. Amen. It's all right. Now listen to me. I didn't say that to put a damper on the service. I don't look to have a heart attack. I don't look like I'm going to do that. But I'm just having a little tightness in my belly right now. And you know when you eat six nano biscuits and you come over here and eat bars of barbecue and you eat cupcakes and baked beans and you drink two glasses of Natty's tea, I mean lemonade that's got sugar all in it, amen. And then you get up here and try to preach, I have to confess before I'll ever be able to profess, amen. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Yes, sir. Amen. Anybody know that gluttony is a sin? Yes, sir. The preacher is sinning. <laughs> but listen, Mr. All right, good to see you smile. But the children of Israel have found themselves in a bad spot. Amen. And listen to me. And they are over there. <laughs> Guess what I just thought? We're going to the Dairy Queen when we get through. <laughs> Uh -huh. Ain't that funny that the flat just runs through the preacher's mind? Uh, ain't that funny that uh, told me? Uh, ain't that scary? I just said I needed help. I got some issues, but then all of a sudden I thought of the DQ, and we'll be sitting there in a few minutes, Amen. and there'll be a blizzard running across my mind. Oh, do you see what I'm talking about? Amen. We get stuck in the things of the world, and we've got to let each other know I need your help. Amen. 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 Listen to me. Hey, I love you. Let's get into it. Amen. I see the children of Israel. They have stopped believing that God knows where He's going. Amen. Because they have sent spies over there and they have looked at the land, Brother Zach, and the people that are in it, the Amalites. Amen, Brother Zach. They're tall folks. They're giants. They're like nine feet tall. Amen. And they make us look like grasshoppers. And what does this have to do with us? They, some of us in here, got some problems that look like giants. It makes us look little. Amen. It makes us, Brother Don. Amen. It makes us look small. Amen. But see, we're not supposed to be looking at these giants through our eyes. We're supposed to be looking at these giants through spiritual eyes and realize there ain't no giant too big for God. Amen. They ain't no problem. Amen. So we've got to go to the point and realize that God still knows what He's doing. We've got to believe that God knows where He's going. Hey, Brother Elijah, I want you to realize at an early age that God, as He told Jeremiah, He knows when you were conceived in your mother's womb. He's already ordained you. He's already got a plan for you. All you've got to do is trust God. There'll be times in your life to work. You don't know but then on our wrist we wear Psalm 62 eight. it says trust in God at all times amen I trust in him pour your heart out to him amen go to him he'll be your refuge amen I'm preaching to you tonight it might not look like that God knows where he's going but God knows exactly where we're headed amen amen, amen. and God still has ability somebody look at your neighbor and say God can Say it out loud. God can. God can. See, the devil, the devil don't like to hear that. He likes you to believe that God, that his hands has been tied. But God can do anything. That's right. God can heal the sick. God can open the blind and eyes. God can make the lame to walk. God can do anything in this kingdom. God can give you a good place to live. God can give you a job. God can give you your whole groceries. Amen. God can do anything. 
Amen. I like what he told Moses before Moses began this trip. Moses said, you, uh, you go to God. You are not going to fail over the children of Israel. They're going to ask who sent me. Amen. He said, you tell them I am sent you. Yes, sir. I am was a representation of who God was. Amen. Listen, God said, I am whatever I need to be. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Ain't it amazing that God can be forceful? Ain't it amazing that God can be loving? Ain't it amazing that God can be provided? He's everything in one. Amen. Amen. But they have quit doing all they have quit believing in God, knowing where He's going and God's ability. Amen. Listen to me. They have stopped and they don't believe it anymore. And now they're stuck there. And they're wondering. Amen. And now, I want to talk to you. They have listened to the wrong people. All the way through the Bible, there has been people that we don't need to listen to. The very first chapter, third chapter in the book of Genesis, Eve listened to the wrong person. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The serpent went to her and told her, said, God's not going to kill you. God don't want you to eat of that forbidden fruit because He knows when you eat of it, you're going to become as wise as God's. Amen? Amen. Y'all read that, ain't you? Yes. Amen. Listen to me. And she listened to him and she fell into his trap. I begin today to sit and meditate a little bit. And I begin, and I'm not going to take time to go look at where it's at. But it, listen to me. There was a blind man named Bartimaeus. Amen. And all of a sudden he had been blind. And he was in Jericho. And it was told by the word of God that Jesus was passing through Jericho and as he was going out of Jericho oh Bartimaeus he couldn't see him but he started hollering for him amen hey, and all of a sudden I want to talk to you a little bit about not Bartimaeus but the crowd that was around him there was a crowd around him that charged him and they told him they said Bartimaeus be quiet but just leave him alone don't call for him amen amen listen to me that I want you to know the devil don't want you to get in touch with God because he knows when you get in touch with God, things are going to happen in your life. Amen. If Bartimaeus would have listened to the folks that were around him, he would have sat down, shut up, and went home blind. Amen. There's a devil sitting here beside us tonight, and he don't want us to call on God. He wants to keep us silent. He don't want us to get in touch with Jesus because when he know when Jesus comes on the scene, things change. Amen. Eyes are open. Amen. The dead can be raised. Lives can be changed. God can take sad folks and make them happy folks. Amen. God can take poor folks and make them rich folks. Amen. Hey God, I'm being honest with you tonight. But things change or we can get in touch with God. So don't let the devil stop you from talking to God. The Bible God's ear is not deaf and he cannot hear us when we call. But I like this part. It said that his head was not to his arm, was not too short that he couldn't reach down and take care of us. Amen. 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 We get stuck sometimes because we let the devil talk us into sitting down and just being there and not praying. Sure do. You know what they was trying to do? Trying to get old Bartimaeus to give up. Yeah. Amen. Trying to get Bartimaeus to give up. He's not, you know what they were saying? He's not going to hear you. He's not going to answer you. He's not going to help you. You might as well shut up, Bartimaeus. He's not coming over here. Bless him. How many times has the devil told you that God ain't going to take care of you? How many times has the devil come to you and says he's not listening to you? Anybody here ever prayed and didn't think God heard you? Anybody here ever prayed and thought you would pray on death ears? Amen. Has anybody here ever prayed and thought that no one cared? That's what this crowd was trying to do, Brother Ethan. They was trying to convince Barnabas that Jesus doesn't love you. He doesn't care for you. He's not listening to you. Yeah. Oh my God. But instead of, instead of him, listen to me, instead of Barnabas getting quiet, he got loud. Amen. 
He didn't quiet down, but he he didn't interrupt the service. He didn't interrupt nothing, but he got loud and said, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy. God said he resisted the proud, but he gave grace to the humble. <laughs> Oh, oh, Bartimaeus got, he got humble. He said, I know you tell me I ain't good enough to talk to him. I know that I don't deserve it. But I know he's passing by. And I'm going to holler. And I'm going to get in touch with him. I need something from God. I wouldn't get stuck tonight and go home in the same shape because I let the devil defeat me. Yeah. Focusing on the crowd. Yeah. You know, the crowd today doesn't like the, they don't mind all the praise you do like this. You know, I, I've never I've never understood these places that can get so emotional in singing. I mean we got these folks that I mean you'll see them dancing, you'll see them cutting a rug while the singers is there, but you let the preacher get a little emotional, you let him come down out of the pulpit, you let him get turned over by the Spirit of God, and they think it's something crazy, amen. Yeah. Amen. Can I tell you, there's something more stirring in me than just my mind. Amen. 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 All you get stirring is your emotions, amen. Come on. That means, you know why I know that? Somebody going to call me a judge after a while. Because when this singing stops, your feelings stop. I just can't feel nothing doing the preaching. Bless him, Lord. <sighs> Boy, I get it when they sing. I like that music. Hey, Amen. Bless him. We don't want nobody to see who we really are. Bless him. Hey, Amen. Have you ever seen anybody like that? I've never seen a time to where, listen to me, and I'm not mad, but I'm not just our church, but a lot of churches, you go in and it'll be so spiritual until the preacher gets it. I know whose fault it is. It's the preacher's fault. <laughs> Got to be, ain't it? He's dry as dirt. That man, he should have given up a long time ago. Hey, Amen. Bartimaeus, if he'd have quit, he'd have never known what it was like for his eyes to be open. Right. If he'd have given up, he'd have got stuck in the crowd. Anybody ever got stuck in the crowd? Yeah. I mean, stuck between folks. I mean, have you ever, have you ever went to a church in Mississippi? I have. You know how big my mouth is. Been somewhere and the preacher get up there and all of a sudden you say, Hey man, if I turn to red. <laughs> Who's in there? What's wrong? Hey man. Hey man. I'm being honest with you. But Barnabas kept on and he got God's attention. And when he got God's attention, Jesus come over and asked him what said, what do you need from the Bartimaeus? And he said, that I might receive my sight. And what did Jesus told him? He said, your faith hath made thee whole. Amen. Somebody look at me. His continuance. Amen. Not getting stuck in the crowd. Not letting the crowd pull you back. Not letting the crowd stop you from worshiping God. Not letting the crowd beat you round, beat you down. I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of what Jesus has done for me. I'm proud I'm not ashamed. The Bible says if I be ashamed of him down here, that he would be ashamed of me when he comes before my Father. Miss Lily, I'm proud of what God's done in my life. Anybody here proud of where God brought you from? Anyway. So Barnabas continued. He didn't let he didn't get stuck in the crowd. Now I want to go to you another place. I heard if we listen to what the devil says, we won't get our miracle. Anybody remember Jairus? Ruler in the synagogue. Well to do ruler. I mean, man well thought of. But he's got a problem. He's got a sick daughter. And he can't do nothing about it. And the doctors can't heal her. And he loves her. Hey Amen. He, he's gone to find help for her. You know why stepping down from where he's staying, he has lowered himself. The way the Jews look at it, Brother Chad, for him to go to Jesus, he is lower, him, lowering his self-esteem to go to someone to ask him for help. Yes, sir. And all of a sudden, Jairus is over there. And you know the story, how the woman with the issue of blood 
comes and touches Jesus and Jesus heals her. And, and Jairus has been waiting this whole time. But all of a sudden this year, they are finally on the way to Jairus' house. And all of a sudden, a little servant from his house comes up and says, Master, your daughter is dead. Amen. Your daughter is dead. Don't trouble the master anymore. And Jesus looked at him and said, just don't, just believe. He said, just believe. Amen, just believe. If he would have believed what he was told, he would give up. Yes, How many folks here have been told it's too late? Amen. How many folks has the devil told you that your prayers are not being answered and it's too late? It's not coming. Amen. I want her. But listen, if there's ever been a person that could have said, it's too late, it could have been Sarah. Uh, all her life, she waited to have a child. And God waits till she's 90 years old. I mean, to show up and bless her womb and give her a son and let her bear a child. Amen? Amen. Look at somebody and say, it ain't too late for God. It ain't too late for God to work in your life. It's not too late for God to do something special. But you got to keep believing, amen. amen. Bless Him, Lord. How many folks have you heard say, it's too late for me? How many folks has the devil tried to make you think it's too late for you to turn your life around? Or how many folks are here that the devil says you've got too long a life to live? You're too young to fall into this Jesus thing. Bless him, Lord. Let me tell you, young folks, something. Hey Amen. The sooner you find Jesus, the better off you'll be. Hey Amen. We need somebody like Jesus in our lives to help us get through the things that we face ahead. But Jairus has been told, he has been told, Brother Scott, she's dead. She's dead. She's dead. She's dead. And if he would believe what he was told, he'd give up. Can, I, can, we, can you give the preacher just a little variance? If Jarius would have believed the report that he got, he would have bowed his head and walked away and left Jesus. How many of you have been told it's too late for your kids? How many of you have been told it's too late for your job? Hey man, hey listen to me. I know that there's some of you been praying for some things that are real special. Hey man, some of you have got some troubles and trials and the devil tells you that it's too late. Hey man, it ain't going to happen. God ain't going to be able to take care of it. You know what I call it? How many believe that that little woman that had them two sons and the creditors were coming? Was it the next day? Huh? Was it real, real, real soon, Brother Tommy? They was coming to her house. Amen. And they were going to take her children. And she looked at what she had in the house. She looked all over her house. They ain't going to tell me how many times. She, and I heard a preacher preaching. It just thrilled my soul. You know what she done? She had sold everything that she had in the house. And everything that she had left was a little pot of oil. That's all she had left. But I'm so glad that what I've got is a dove. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. And this little woman, she if she have went on what it looked like, Amen. Brother Jason, if she would have looked at the way things looked, she might have thought of taking her sons and running away. And that's what the devil wants to get you on the run tonight. But you, God's children don't run. Amen. 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 Listen to me. God's children will stand there. You, hey, listen to me. How many remember by the Red Sea? Yep. Can I tell you that God's, God's children are not cowards? But God told Moses, He said, I just want you to stand still. And you know what's the hardest thing to do in the middle of a storm? is just to stand still. Yes, Amen. Amen. To do nothing at all. You would have thought, give me a little room here. You would have thought God would have said, take 50 of them Israelites over there and hide them. Take 100 over there and hide them. Put these behind this rock. But he looked at Moses and he said, I just want you to stand still. 
What is this going to do? Because we think that if we don't, when something happens, if we don't retaliate, if we don't fire back, that nothing's going to be done. But God said, no, I want to see how much you trust me. I want to see how much you believe in me. Stand still. Yes. You ever went through anything that God just made you stand still? And didn't show you what? Now, Mr. Cameron, it would have been good if you called out. Just stand here, Moses. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to bust the Red Sea wide open. Huh? If he'd have called, you know, give them heavenly lines. Central's never busy. Y'all God is always on the line. Amen. If he'd have called down there and said, Moses! Just stand still. I just don't like calling you and telling you. I'm finna spread the red sea. Yep. Y'all going on the cross. So don't worry. But he didn't get no phone call from heaven. He didn't get no special instructions. Look out! All he got was stand still! <laughs> You want me to stand here and the devil's coming right in with 600 chairs and he's after me? <laughs> Not only we, if we listen to what we're told, but if we look at what we see, uh, we'll get stuck. How many times have you thought about going back to Egypt by the way things look? Let me tell you what you eat with it. A beer, a peel. Yeah. Yeah. Just by the way things look. Things look like they're fixing to overcome you. Things look like they're bigger than you are. Oh, just sit there and don't talk to me. It'd be alright. You ain't never faced something that you thought was bigger than you can handle. Blessings. Blessings. You ain't never sat there and God said, have faith in me, but God ain't telling you how he's going to get you out of it. Yes, right. That's all right. One of y'all, some of y'all, if, if the Spirit ever falls on some of y'all, <laughs> we're going to have a Holy Ghost revival. Absolutely. <laughs> because I'm here to tell you, if it ever falls on somebody, it's going to be worse than the day the squirrel got loose in the first Baptist church in Mississippi. <laughs> You ain't gonna know what it is. <laughs> hey, I'm serious. Some grabs your heart, squeeze your eyes, and tears come down. And I'm, Whoa! You throw your hands up in the air, and all of a sudden you just forget about your cares and your heartache and your troubles and your trials, and says, "I'm just gonna stay right here, man." Yeah. So we can't listen to what we're told. And we can't always go on the way things look because these children have looked at it and they have listened to the ten spies and they are stuck. And all I'm trying to do is be a prosperity preacher. I want you to have the best of everything because that's what Jesus was. You have no Bible for that. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That's prosperity. That's Jesus wanting you to have more than you ever had. Blessing. Hey, man. Amen. Blessing. Hey, you know the reason some of our kids don't have no more? They don't believe no more because we act like we don't believe. Blessing. And can I tell you, I'm feeling better now. <laughs> hey, man. Can I tell you something? Hey, man. I, I, I'm being honest with you. Amen. If you was to try to sell your salvation and your joy for the way you act, you wouldn't get nothing for it. Right. I wouldn't. Nobody want it. Right. Amen. Amen. But listen to me. I'm going to read you some scripture. I've got about 15 minutes or maybe 10 and then we'll go home. Listen to me. I, 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 there are folks that are stuck and you know, we can't always blame it on our health. And we can't blame it on our finances. Amen. We are in stuck because we want to stay stuck. Amen. Amen. God will get you out of that position. Mike, you were stuck. Spent all your money on drugs. Didn't have nothing. Worried your mom and dad to death. Listen to the way you live. I'm not patting you on the back. You was a devil. 
You worried everybody. You were stuck in a place in this world. But God. The Bible says, I, I, I love to talk about this man. I used to run with a man named Johnny Harper. My family knows who he was. He used to go to church with me. And if you'd have known who Johnny was, you'd have never dreamed he'd have been sitting in church. And when he come to church, he didn't cut his hair, wore his ponytail, amen, wore his blue jeans and them big old boots, but God done something to that man. God changed his life, stopped him from drinking, stopped him from cursing, stopped him from running around. Just looking for our joy. Blessing, Lord. Looking for our happiness. Blessing. It must have been a hard day at your house. Blessing. I'm gonna quit pulling punches with you. Amen. Yeah, who have you listened to? It ain't as bad as it looks. Amen. Amen. My kids ain't in church, but I'm gonna tell you something. God's able to get them there. Amen. If you get stuck, you quit coming and you quit worshiping. Then that's where the problem comes in. Yes, sir. Listen to me. I know I'm making a mess, but I want you to know something today. Jairus did not believe the report. He asked Jesus to come with him. He said, Come on, go with me. Amen. And Jesus went into his house. And y'all know the story how that the folks there laughed at Jesus openly. How many times has somebody sniggered at you when you said, God's going to take care of that? God's going to take care of me. God's going to take care of this mess I'm in. God's going to get me out of this. And the devil just sniggered. God ain't going to do nothing to help you. She's dead. And Jesus goes into the house and when the door is opened again, here comes that little girl out. <laughs> Amen. 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 Who's smiling now? Amen. Who's smiling now? It's, listen to me. I'm going to read you some scripture. And I want you to mark it down in your Bible. I'm not going to hold you any longer. But in the 13th chapter of St. Luke, starting with the 10th verse, And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. And she was bold together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, we want to get loose tonight. We're being stuck. Amen. We've been stuck. That we have got stuck. These things that I have talked to you about have caused us in our Christian life to come to a standstill. He says, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And for the next just few minutes, can I show you what that woman was walking around like? This right here. Amen. This is the way the Bible describes her. She had, <coughs> she had an infirmity. She was not able to straighten up. Amen. Her back was not strong enough. Her muscles was not good enough to cause her to straighten up. Everywhere she went, this is the way she'd have to go. She'd go to church. Guess where we find her at in the synagogue? I mean, she can't straighten up. She's been walking around like this for 18 years, and she's still going to church. Somebody say, hallelujah. Oh, but she would go to church, and she would shake hands, and she would talk to folks. Amen. Has any of y'all ever tried to walk like this? Amen. This is her for 18 years. Everywhere she went, she went like this. Can you imagine that? Uh, uh, now listen to me. Stand up on me, chat. If I was in this shape all the time, I couldn't see his face. I'd have to talk to him looking at his waist. Hey, Amen. I'm serious. Hey, listen, why did you say that? There's a lot of times when I talk to him that I can't see him. And I feel like I'm walking. Oh, well, I feel like I'm looking at his feet. Hey, Amen. Hey, thank you, Chad. Hey, Amen. This little woman, she, she was staying like this. And there ain't no telling how bad she hurt. I can hold my neck up just for a little while to look around. Hey, Amen. And you know what? I feel the muscles in my neck tightening up. 
and it, I feel the strain on my posture. And I know most of the time she walked with her head down like this, not being able to see. All she could see was right in front of her. All she could see was what was right out there. And Brother Larry, she couldn't see. She didn't see no future. Amen. For 18 years, I could see if this is something that just happened six months ago, that she might have thought that they was home, that she might have thought that this was uh, something that could be cured. But she's had this problem for 18 years. Uh, there's nobody that's been able to help her. But yet we find her in the synagogue. Still going to church. Guess what? She didn't let her the way she was cause her to get stuck. Even though her physical side was stuck, her spiritual side was free. Amen. She said, I might have to walk like this down here, but when I get to where I'm going, I'm going to walk like this. Amen. 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 Have you ever thought about it? She dreamed of the day that she would be able to straighten up but right now she stooped back over I know some of y'all are ready to go to the house I can feel it y'all ever felt the impression of the spirit of God y'all think I'm an idiot amen but God speaks to me amen and he lets me know amen. and you know what that's the reason God don't do no more for you because you get stuck in your little infirmities your little troubles and trials that you face, you let it get the best of you. I'm going to straighten up so half of us can stump our toe in this two weeks. <laughs> Amen. Hey, it's all right. It's all right. Look at I'm only trying to help you not to let the devil get you stuck. You're the only one. This woman's not walking like this. Walking like she can't straighten up. She can't straighten up. But guess what? Jesus seen her that day. Yeah. Amen. Jesus seen the trouble that she was in. Jesus seen. Amen. Jesus seen what she was going through. And I'm hurting. And he called her over there. And this is what he told her. He said, this woman was stuck in this position. Jesus said, Woman, thou art loose. Look out. Then the Bible says that he laid hands on her. And I believe when he laid hands on her, all of a sudden she felt something she hadn't felt in a long time. She felt the anointing of the power of God. And she was able to straighten up. Hey, listen to me. You know what? She did not let her infirmities cause her to get stuck and keep her from getting the blessings of God. Amen. You know the reason our homes are not blessed no more than they are? We let, listen to me. I know a lot of folks, especially in smaller places, get mad when preachers preach on tithing. But when you preach on tithing, you preach on being, getting an increase to your house. Because when you give to God, God gives back to you. Huh? I know some of you just can't see that. Some of you can't understand that God, all of a sudden, He doesn't let you have as much because you can't turn loose of what you got. I watched Granny. She gets a check every month. You know what she does? Her tithe goes right there. She gives back to God. Do what? Amen. Hey, she's on a fixed income. That's right. But you got it made, ain't you, Granny? Right. Ain't it funny how God can take your check and give you a house? Amen. Yeah. Hey, give you a place to sleep, keep you out of the dry, keep you out of the wet, keep, give you food to eat, clothes on your back. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Amen. I'm preaching to you tonight. I'm telling you that if you will not let your finances or your, your, your health or other things stop you or get you stuck in your life, I'm going to start tithing when God gives me that good job. 
As soon as God gives me a raise, I'm going to tie. Amen. I'm going to tie as soon as God blesses me. See, I'm only making $8 an hour. And God, I'm going to tie as soon as I get that $7 hour raise. When I start making $15 an hour, I'm going to tie. And listen to me. We got the best giving church around. And I don't have to preach. You look at our board. Every Sunday, there are folks in here that listen to me, that give, they give to God, and God gives back to them. Amen. There might be somebody here that's stuck, and you ain't going no further with God until you can turn that loose. Because the Bible says we can't love manna and God too. Hey, listen to me. And I, I, I'm only trying to help folks go forward with their Christian life. I know preachers that won't preach on time. I know preachers that won't even say nothing about it. And I just ask myself sometimes, don't you want your people to be blessed? Don't you want your people to be rewarded? Don't you want God to open up the windows of heaven and bless your church? Amen! Amen! I know. Bless him. But God told that woman, Jesus said, Woman, thou art loose. He said, I have need you to live with you tonight. He said, I'm setting you free. Just like he set the children of Israel free. He set them free. Set them free. And tonight, can I tell you the next step in your life, in your Christian life? Christians can get stuck. You won't admit it. Don't shake. Don't nobody move your head. Everybody just look at me. We all have been stuck at one time or another. Amen. Over something we heard or something that happened, and it causes us to stop moving forward. Stop moving forward, and it robs us of the blessings of God. If Barnabas would have listened to what he was told, he would have never received his sight. If Jairus would have believed what he was told, his family would have never been back together. If this woman would have given up and not went to the synagogue and stayed at home because she was stuck, she would have never got loose. Today, God wants to set you free. He wants to give you more than He ever has before. God wants to bless your life. God wants to take... Preacher, I'm doing good, but God wants you to take you better than doing good and make you do real good. You see, the children of Israel, God had given them the promised land. It wasn't a land that they would have to come... You ever thought about this? It wasn't a land that they would have to come to. It was a land that was already flourishing. It was already flowing with milk and honey. Already prepared for them. Yeah. God's got something ready for you. You just need to get unstuck. You need to get loose. You need to let Jesus loose you tonight. Set me free of all my cares, of all my troubles, and let my mind be on heavenly things. Sing me a verse of a song. Just, man, if you ain't got one, you got one, come on. That'd be good. Hey, Amen. Listen to me. Tonight, we want to, we want to really, really get loose tonight. Set all of our kids. How many want to be blessed next week? Amen. You got to get loose. You got to get unstuck. Huh? You got to get unstuck. We got to move forward. Hey, Amen. Can I tell you something? Negative thinking, folks. Negative thinking spreads. It does. Do you know you let negativity get in your church and it spreads worse than the mumps? Worse than the measles? It does. And all it takes is one negative person to walk in and say, God can't. All it takes is one person that says, God, God, God's not in that. I'm being serious. If ten folks can change millions of folks' mind, look what one person can do in a small place like this. 
God, tonight I'm charged of all my negative things. I'm charged of my negativity in my life. I'm charged of always looking at things so bad. I want you to loose me. I want you to free my mind and let me see the things that you want me to see. Let me see the goodness and the mercy that you got that's following me. I know it's hard to get loose once the devil's got you. Ain't that right, Brother Mike? It's hard to get loose. Once you get loose, what a good thing that it is. Amen. There might be somebody here that's got problems in your family. There might be a sickness. There might be trouble with your finances. Or there might be trouble in your home between you and your husband or you and your wife. God wants to help you get through that. He wants to help you get unstuck and help you get back on your journey going to where He wants you to go. And that's to a land that's flowing with milk and honey. I know you've been through some hard times. I know you've been through some troubled places. But God said tonight, I want to loose you and set you free while we stand. Are you looking for a place to worship God in spirit and in truth? Hello, I'm Frankie Green, pastor of Trinity Baptist Church in Auburn, Georgia. We would like to invite you to be in our service with us. Sunday school starts at 10 with morning worship at 11. Sunday evening worship begins at 6 and Wednesday night prayer service at 7. We are a King James Bible-believing, fundamental, independent Baptist church reaching out to those who need a special touch from God. For more information, you can visit us at TrinityBaptistAuburn.com or on Facebook at Trinity Baptist Church Auburn. We welcome you to Trinity Baptist Church where you will become part of a family.